Hi, I'm Will Townsend, and this is 6-5 Media on the Road at RSA Conference 2025. And I have an opportunity to speak with Tom Gillis. He's a Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Infrastructure and Security Group at Cisco. Tom, how's it going? Good to see you, Will. Yeah, it's always, always great to see you. Yeah, and I, you know, you're famous for your Tomisms, and so I'm going to lay one on you. <laughs> um, Cisco is really bringing sexy back to security. Yeah. And your return is, is uh, you know, one of the reasons why, for, in, in my humble opinion. But the payload of announcements this week was, was quite, you know, impressive. And can we spend some time and talk through those? Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, there's, there's some big trends that are happening in industry that are allowing Cisco to innovate in ways that are pretty unique mm -hmm. relative to other vendors out there. And mm -hmm. The common denominator on all of that is the network. Sure. That's what we're great at, yep. right? And the network is playing a more important role in how we manage and secure existing applications mm -hmm. against, say, uh, known vulnerabilities. It seems like a pedestrian type problem. Sure. But we could do amazing things there, as well as these new crazy emerging threats that we see targeting infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the movement towards AI. So huge amounts of changes, but they all seem to have a common thread, which is the network to play a critical role yeah. in the architecture of the future as mm -hmm. well as today. Yeah. In AI Defense, when you launched that in January, I was at that, um, that launch event in Palo Alto, really impressed with robust intelligence and that yeah. automated red teaming capability. Yeah. I know, tied to some of the announcements, there's some enhancements to AI Defense, yes. as well as some other things as well. Yes. Yep. So um, um, the, the, for those that aren't familiar with AI Defense, let me describe the problem it solves. Yep. Um, traditional application is very predictable very deterministic, right? You've got data that lives in a database, you've got an acceptable uh, question answer pair, mm -hmm. and we can look at each one of those question answer pairs in isolation and you can figure out, is this okay or not okay? Yeah. Now we introduce an AI-based application. You inject this new thing called a model. The model takes all that data, slurps it in. When a model learns something, it never forgets. Mm -hmm. So model knows all your secrets, yeah. right? And the question answer pair, it's not always the same. You can ask it the same question twice and get two different, slightly mm -hmm. different answers. And so where there, there is an opportunity for manipulation is, I like to think of it as, um, when you were a kid, did you ever play the game 20 questions? Oh yeah. I've got a secret, you got 20 questions to guess my secret. Right. You almost always get it in less than 20 questions. Yeah. So that's the world we're living in now where attackers can play 20 questions and try to find the secrets that these models contain. Mm -hmm. um, and the only way to stop that, you can't stop that with a firewall rule, Yeah. right? So you need to be able to understand and apply reasoning to that back and forth series of questions, not right. just one, but the, the 20 questions. Yeah. Um, with Cisco's AI defense, we so do two aspects to it. We can qualify a model ahead of time by playing not 20 questions, mm -hmm. but the 2 billion questions. We yeah. constantly try right. to trick the model and we can find its weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. But then we also have the ability to bring that same um, uh, capability into the runtime. Mm -hmm. So when the model's being used, we can look at those question answer pairs and say, wait a minute, this, this model is supposed to be about scheduling delivery of mm -hmm. sheet metal. Mm -hmm. Why are you asking it about credit card information? And you can dynamically guardrail, correct? Right? Yeah. It's guardrails, and this is an important point. It's guardrails that live in the network. Right. Right. And so, so we fundamentally believe in the separation of duties model, mm -hmm. where an app team may have guardrails that they can bake into the application. That's good and that's important. But there are going to be many, many different models running in the enterprise, many different applications. Mm -hmm. So when mm -hmm. we give the IT and security teams the ability to say, no matter what happens, no matter right. what model they download or what they set, they set in the application, the guardrails that we provide are in the network that common thread, right? right? And therefore um, uh, create like a common substrate for security independent of the application. Yeah. And you announced the ServiceNow SecOps integration this week, right? Correct. With AI Defense. Correct. Can you talk about that Correct. for a yes. minute? So, so the idea is that AI behaves so much differently than a traditional based application. Right. We have built a workflow where if we see something anomalous, we connect that, uh, we'll open a ticket in ServiceNow, and ServiceNow mm -hmm. is taking mm -hmm. an audit of, oh, wait a minute, we didn't even know that was an AI based work. Right. right. So just having visibility and discovery into what's happening in the enterprise environment is mm -hmm. super important. And in our view, ServiceNow is like the kind of registry, you know, of record, right? Mm -hmm. It's trying to keep track of a CMDB and what, mm -hmm. and what all the various pieces. It's are. more than ITSM, right? I mean, they've really evolved that platform Correct. over time. Correct. It's it's understanding what are the components that go into to make up an application, mm -hmm. and 
that's essential for us because in this distributed world, beyond just AI defense, all of our security controls are becoming much more fine-grained. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm sitting under a Postgres database, I want to know which version of Postgres am I running on mm -hmm. so that we can apply controls specific to that Postgres database or that SQL database mm -hmm. or that Apache server or that Coop cluster. Mm -hmm. So integrating with ServiceNow, I believe that the, what we started with AI Defense is the first in a series of steps on that journey. Yeah, for sure. And then there, there, there are other things tied to the, 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 the launch payload this week, but can you talk about Foundation AI? Yeah. So um, uh, the whole world has been trying to use these sort of general purpose models, which are quite astounding how smart these things are. It's crazy. Crazy, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, like, uh, and, it, and the speed at which they're developing, like every few months, they look like, I, I asked Grok, forward. like, are my Texas Longhorns going to win the national championship this year? And it was incredible, the response that right. came back. <laughs> right, right. And, and, and so I would argue that that, the, the, that is a perfect example of the strength, but also the weakness of these general purpose models and that you can ask it anything. Yeah. You know, what should I do with my life? And it's going to give you like a plausible answer. Right. If we can constrain a model to say, look, I, I don't want, I want to use a, a model for doing incident response. It shouldn't have an opinion on the Longhorns. It no, shouldn't even, no. you know what I shouldn't mean? Shouldn't be like, relevant. <laughs> and if you're listening to your firewall, you know, sort of AI agent about advice on football games, like you're in deep trouble, you know, right? And so, <laughs> so we're trying to make that easy for you. Sure. We're, we're a focused model that is looking at a very specific data set that mm -hmm. we can tune for the security use case. We think could drive much higher levels of accuracy right. and efficacy. Yeah. Um, and we believe that this should be um, ubiquitous. Yeah. So Foundation AI is an open source model. Right. It's trained on a much smaller data set, so it's not going to use a massive GPU cluster. Right? We can and it's, it. it's security focused as well, which I find really compelling. Very purpose built, and we think this is where the industry is going to go. There's going to be these purpose built models right. that are better able to, it's like a specialist is better than a generalist. Sure. Right? The, yeah. the, uh, the, the, that medical analogy is actually perfect. You have general practitioners, they, you always will. But you have a cardiologist and a neurosurgeon, yeah, right. right? You know, and uh, and an anesthesiologist, and so um, uh, this is that for security. And the fact that it's open source, we believe that the community will be able to use this model, train this model, and continue to sharpen sure. its focus. Um, and this gets even more interesting when we introduce reasoning into the model, yeah. right? Where it could be like, oh, that looks funny, right? Right? Yeah. yeah. Maybe we should look deeper. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you expect that you know data lakes will be organized into security ponds or lakes or? <laughs> well, the, the head of Splunk Security, Mike Horn, mm -hmm. who's an old friend of mine, and I are are sharing uh, the discussion. But the whole way that security sim has worked was take all the data you possibly can and mm -hmm. slurp it into this data lake. Right. You know, in an AI world where applications are generating lots more data, the agents are talking to each other, like the amount of data you need to slurp in is growing exponentially. Mm -hmm. And these, these apps are not just in a data center, so they're, 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 they're moving, distributed. They're yeah. moving into the real world. It's just not practical to ingest all that data into one uh, big giant data lake. Sure. The, the economics make no sense at all. Yeah. So, so we believe the blueprint in a post AI world will be a distributed model where okay. you have data ponds, you know, and even data Did ponds. I use the right you terminology? Did. Absolutely right. So oh, it's awesome. data lake, you know, and, and, and what's kind of cool about how we're doing this is we're, it's a little bit techie here, but uh, yeah. bear with me. Okay. With the Splunk team has been driving the thinking of let's take that one big SIM data lake and break it into five pieces of sure. data lakes. One of them might be an S3 bucket on Amazon. Another would be the firewall log uh, administrator console yeah. on your premise-based firewalls. Now you don't have to ingest those firewall logs. You capture them, they live locally, but mm -hmm. you can search across them. So we're taking one, breaking it to five, breaking it to 10, and kind of pushing down. But from the very, very bottom of this stack, the device itself, we're actually, with HyperShield, we're able to understand a transaction in the network at the process level. Mm -hmm. So not just that it's an Apache server connecting to a Kube cluster, we can see what process in Apache is yeah. connecting to what process in Kubernetes. The visibility is incredible. Unbelievable, right? Yeah. And in a world where you have attackers that are stealing credentials mm -hmm. and moving through legitimate pathways, you really need to look at the process level to be able to figure out friend from foe. That's three orders of magnitude more data than you're ingesting in firewall logs, sure. right? And yeah. so, so 
So we're able to capture that data in this graph and give you an end-to-end -end view of this process, start of the connection, this process terminated the connection, here's what the connection looks like, yeah. in a very compact fashion that we send up into Splunk. So this idea of, of you know, creating a, an architecture where the infrastructure itself can express east-west traffic mm -hmm. into a security analytics layer yeah. without blowing up some giant ingest bill. Right. Distributed architecture is the way to do it. We yeah. have the kind of tops down federation and the bottoms up graph that's coming from the devices themselves and they'll sort of meet yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's just been a ton of integration, right? I mean, and, and innovation, when you look at AI defense and, and hypershield, I mean, so, I mean, you set the bar really high, Tom. So like, what, <laughs> what's, next? What, what's next? What's next? Look, at, at the end of the day, people expect product excellence in their security products, right? Right. Like, like trying to sell a Me Too security product, you know, it's like trying to sell a mediocre pacemaker. Right. You know, if I want to be like, not, oh, not a good thing. Yeah, right? Like, 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 I've got this pacemaker. It's not quite as good as the, as the Medtronic one, but it's, you know, it's half the cost. And if, if it fails, we'll send a technician to your house the next day. Right. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, so product excellence is the foundation. And then, the, but, the, but the reason why Cisco has been getting momentum and attention is because customers are very interested in this platform idea. Right. Right? It, 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 we've proven that just adding one more tool into the tool chain is not going to deliver a better outcome. In fact, it creates... It creates seams. sprawl and, yeah. and management Mistakes. friction. Correct. And, Correct. Yeah. So, so, you know, having a more narrow set of functionality that's, that's extremely well integrated and can oftentimes be transformative. Like, look at what we did with the firewall. Mm -hmm. With HyperShield, we're putting firewalls into switches and routers. Mm -hmm. uh, and we talked about this this morning. Yeah. It's not going to have every feature of a mature hardware firewall appliance. It never will. I don't but, want but to But by the way, in. on average, I think you and I discussed that 10 to 20% of the Correct. actual firewall's capabilities Correct. are actually deployed. Correct. So we take that core functionality that people actually use and we actually make it better, Yeah. right? With HyperShield, we can put that little baby firewall everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we know, hey, this is a Postgres server. Yeah. Nobody patches a database or infrequently, right? Mm -hmm. So it's riddled with vulnerabilities. We can apply compensating controls to that database. Mm -hmm. Good luck trying to do that with a hardware firewall appliance, right. Right? right? So we take the core functionality and actually make it better with this integrated approach. Yeah, no, I love it. Agentic AI, I mean, it's on everyone's yeah. minds, lips, you yeah. know, it's a big theme this year. Yeah. How are you thinking about the application of Agentic AI yeah. with respect to Cisco Secure? Um, uh, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. So uh, uh, on the positive, you know, we showed you some demos of what we're doing with Cisco XDR, mm -hmm. where we're taking these kind of complex attack graphs where you can see this, 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 and you know, it's depicted as like a little bubble and an arrow and like a bunch of information. Yeah. A security analyst looks at that and says, oh, I know what it is. But it, like a lot of people look at it and be like, I don't know, it's gibberish. Yeah, yeah. We're using Agentic AI to turn that into a movie, right? So, so we can present this to a network administrator or to a less sophisticated security analyst. And they're like, oh, here's what happened. This email came in. Someone clicked on it. We saw yeah. movement over to this host. They contaminated that host. They updated, you know, they went and changed uh, configuration in a router. Yeah. So being able to lay that all out in kind of plain English common sense, mm -hmm. that's real, right? right? So that's our agents that are doing that, which is awesome. Sure. Right? Flip side is that let's think about the access control problem in security, right? Mm -hmm. the, the basic function of a network is who gets to get in and what do they get to get to? Sure. Basic, that's what a network yeah. does. Least privileged access is what the industry is looking for. So mm -hmm. salespeople can go to sales apps, IT people can go to IT apps, but you don't want salespeople getting into IT apps, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Almost like common sense. Yeah. Well, we want to apply those same least privileged principles to things, right? So in the office, uh, a printer is kind of What have like, you said? Printer, printers are people. Or printers something. are all people too, exactly, right? They're, like, they're very simple people, but they, they, the printer wants to talk to the print manager. Yeah, yeah. So we need to apply least privileged policies to that. A printer is not going to log in and register itself on a proxy. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. having the ability to tag that identity in the network, this is all stuff that's here and now today. Sure. This is what, what uh, Gartner calls universal ZTNA. So mm -hmm. it's people and things yep. that we apply least privilege to. AI agents is going to muddy that water like crazy because all of a sudden, a printer that has an AI agent on it could actually kind of look like a human. Mm -hmm. And I think the more sticky problem is a, a machine where it's Tom, and I'm logging into the Cisco network, 
and I'm on my Cisco machine and my signatures are up to date and everything's validated and I've got a legitimate username and password and I start checking in code into the source code repository, mm -hmm. but I'm on vacation in Mexico. Yeah. Because it's an agent that's checking in that that's, code. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. Could tricky. be no bueno. It could tricky. Be, yeah, Correct. tricky. <laughs> for, right now you can't even see it, right? So yeah. for the first thing was, can we extend this notion of identity to understand the identity of an agent? Right. Yes. We Which can. is going to be crucial, crucial. To, to making a, a gentic You've got to be able to function. see it. Then we can build policies where we can identify yeah. when is an agent free to just go do things and when are they not. Yep. It's, it's And this is all happening at breakneck speed. Yeah. You know, this isn't like five years from now. No, it's right? been incredible like to watch Flying it. cars and all that. Like, this yeah. is happening now, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, hey, to close our conversation, I'd love to touch on complexity mm -hmm. and the skills, you know, shortage yeah. in the industry. Yeah. And, you know, certainly generative AI has done a lot to reduce friction mm -hmm. to, you know, onboard SOC analysts more quickly, but specifically what is Cisco doing to further reduce complexity and improve agility for security operations? Yeah, I'll give you a very specific example. Example. Um, one of the things customers love about Cisco is that you could run a Cisco switch without a reboot for a decade. Mm -hmm. If customers did it. It's bulletproof, yeah. Two I've heard the same thing. Two decades, 20 years, this thing has been running without a reboot. Can you imagine yeah, that? Right? That's like, crazy. I had a customer that literally was like, I spilled a beer on my Cat 6K and kept running. Now, question is, why did you have what? a beer in yeah. a data center? But like, like, this is Liquid a cooling, maybe? Special kind of customer. Liquid yeah, cooling. Yeah, I spilled a beer. <laughs> um, um, uh, so the hardware almost never fails yeah. in the network, right? And when it does fail, there's enough redundancy and resilience built in that, you, that, that, that a failure can be tolerated. Mm -hmm. It's the, the, the policy, all the policies that we layer on top, that's where the trouble comes in. Sure. Misconfiguration. Misconfiguration yeah. or misunderstanding of the configuration. Yeah. AI is changing that now. So we have capabilities in market today where when you go to make a change to the access control policy, instead of, you ever play the game Jenga? Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, yeah. Like in the old world, it's like Jenga. You pull the block out yeah. and you're like, oh, look at that, nothing broke, right? <laughs> in, in, in the new world, we use synthetic traffic generation and AI to say, you want to make this policy change. Let's verify yeah. from the endpoint to the application, it's doing what we thought it would do. Mm -hmm. I believe that we will drive network outages due to misconfiguration, which is the dominant form of, of network outage, to zero, or yeah. very close to zero. Yeah. And that's happening now, yeah. right? Yeah, so it's an exciting time. It really is, Tom. Yeah. Hey, I, I always enjoy you know, our conversations. I always learn something new. I always pick up a little catchphrase from you as well. Awesome. But I just want to thank you for the conversation, and I want to thank our viewers for tuning in. This is 6.5 Media on the road at RSA Conference 2025.